Now, for more on this, Malcolm Davis joins me now from Canberra. He's a senior analyst with the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, and uh, he's conducting research on the future of space power. Welcome to TRT World. This is a, a very important day, isn't it? And uh, I know you've said the following, that the South Pole is important because it's a stepping stone for the rest of the solar system. Can you unpack that for us and explain why? Sure. Uh, essentially, the moon has a very shallow gravity well, uh, so it doesn't take a lot of energy to launch a spacecraft from the surface of the moon into orbit and then beyond uh, to places like Mars or the outer solar system. Also, uh, the potential for large amounts of water ice located in the lunar regolith, the lunar soil, is, is very real. And that's what Chandran 3 is looking for. It's looking for that water ice. If you can access that water ice and process it into rocket fuel, uh, then you can potentially use that moon as a launch pad for missions to Mars, to, uh, to beyond. And you can also exploit those lunar resources to create and build things up in space. Mm -hmm. Exploit, can I just pick, pick up on that, Malcolm? Exploit those sure. lunar resources, because some of the guests I've had on here have talked about mining the moon, that that could be a possibility if this works. Exactly. Uh, there is lunar resources up there that can be mined uh, using uh, robotic technologies uh, controlled by humans on the surface, on moon bases. You could then process those, those materials into uh, essentially uh, structures that can be built into spacecraft or space-based solar power satellites to beam solar power back to Earth. And so it is possible to mine the moon to utilize those lunar resources. And the key point is, you're not having to haul everything up Earth's gravity well. You're doing it from the moon rather than from the Earth. And that ch fundamentally changes the economics and the business case of space exploration. And there is such a rush right now to land on the South Pole of the moon. We saw Russia try and uh, fail a few days ago. Now India is trying today. Um, why is it so difficult to land on the South Pole of the moon? Well, it's, it's probably uh, no more difficult to land on the South Pole than land anywhere else on the moon. I mean, space is hard, as the saying goes. And to get uh, a, a lander down to the surface, no matter where you look, is always difficult. But we've never had a lander at the South Pole of the moon. And the South Pole is really important because it's not only where the water ice is likely to be, it's the location where human astronauts will, will basically uh, land in the next few years under the US Artemis mission. And the Chinese are also looking to send human astronauts, taikonauts, to the lunar surface to the same location. So if humans are going to be on the moon again in the second half of this decade, they're going to be in the South Pole. And that's where we have to go. That's where we have to send unmanned probes like Chandran-3 uh, to be able to look for that water ice, to be able to look for resources and set the groundwork for eventually humans returning to the moon in the second half of this decade. And just very quickly, Malcolm, yes or no, do you think that Chandrayaan-3 will be successful today at 12.30 GMT? I'm hoping so. I'll be watching from Canberra at about 10.35 Canberra time, and I'm really hoping that the uh, Indians have a great deal of success tonight. Absolutely. Good luck, Chandrayaan-3. Thank you so much, Malcolm Davis. Thank you. Appreciate your time and uh, expertise.